What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Trapper channel coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell as we get going. If it's your first time here at the Odd Trapper channel, welcome. If it's your first time finding my videos, welcome again. Uh, we can have some winners like the Chicago White Sox. Huge stand for me yesterday. Kind of a rough spot. The rest of the board. I mean, St. Louis, what in the world? Uh, but a lot of fun stuff going on here at Odd Shopper, especially as we get ready for NFL, because at FanDuel and DraftKings, you bet $5 at either one of those, and you're going to get $350 total. So again, I know a lot of you have already signed up at DraftKings and FanDuel, but again, DraftKings, you bet $5, you get $200 just by going to the video description box below. Betting on anything on the board, you get $200 instantly to your account uh, in free bets, no strings attached. And then also FanDuel, you bet $5, you get $150. Uh, just simple as that. So go sign up in the video description box below if you don't have those two, the biggest sports books that exist in the entire industry. But 15 games, say so we got to get to it. Let's get to some picks, shall we? All right, first up, we've got the Mets and the Pirates. Taiwan Walker taking on Mitch Keller. Same matchup as yesterday. That's what it's assumed to be, at least. But shout out to the Pirates for just calling the game immediately in the morning. No sweat, no worries. Just move it to Wednesday for a doubleheader. We still have this Tuesday standalone game, but wish more teams would do that. It saves us from the on again, off again, trying to guess the weather stuff. And that brings an interesting equation into Tuesday, though, because I'm assuming both pitchers stay the same here. Sometimes they'll just scratch them and go to better iterations of the pitchers if it's on synced rest. But uh, right now the line is posted for Walker versus Keller. So that's what I'm going with here. We talked about PNC Park and how it plays for runs yesterday, and the analysis stays the exact same. 12th in baseball in terms of run creation, a surprising stat for a ballpark that feels like a cavern to hit home runs out of. Uh, falls 22nd in baseball for that category. But the highlights, uh, both of these pitchers are low lights, in fact. Uh, hard hit rates around 40% for both. Strikeout rates below 20%. Identical expected batting averages at 255. They're bad numbers. So you factor in the ballpark plus the lineups. Nothing's changed for me here. Uh, would be really weird if I just changed my opinion on a game with the exact same two pitchers and almost the exact same weather. But I digress. A like play on the over of eight is the play for me in this one. We're running it back. Off to the trot for Red Sox and Rays, Rich Hill and Drew Rasmussen on the mound for their respective teams. Starting with Hill for the Red Sox. I try not to make a habit of betting mid-40-year-old soft-tossing southpaws against uh, teams with 106 WRC plus is on the road against a really good reason. Uh, let's just say we don't do that. Uh, but it just plus 130, plus 140. Yeah, don't bet this dumb shit. I'm not going to. And Drew Rasmussen has been a bit of an enigma for me. I would call it a blind spot, but I can easily see what he's doing. Just lets it rip with a high 90s fastball, high spin fastball at that. A cutter that he's added to the arsenal this season, and it's been a very effective pitch. And he just tells Patters, come after those two. Uh, he never really looks flashy. He doesn't have the strikeout stuff to go with it at just 22.1%. But a 294 x Woba combined with a great uh, home ballpark have his ERA down to 2.61 on the season. Oh, and his home ERA, for what it's worth, 1.97 with a 177 batting average against him. That's pretty good to bet on. So I'm actually going to take out a small, minuscule like play on the Tampa Bay money line. I know it's some decent juice to be paying here at around minus 160. That's kind of the prevailing number. You can get a minus 155. That's what's there on the screen here. But with a pretty uninspired Red Sox team at the moment, I think I can handle it. Like button, Tampa money line. This is a fascinating pitching matchup we have on hand in Philly for Tuesday. It's Aaron Nola and the Phillies hosting Jesus Lizardo and the Marlins. And one of my least favorite things to do in all of the land is bet against legit pitchers I believe in at heavy juice, which means... As much as I love uh, Aaron Nola against this weak Marlins lineup that ranks 23rd in run creation versus right-handed pitchers this season, I can't pull the trigger against Lazardo. The kid is just too filthy with a 273 x Woba, 203 expected batting average, and a robust 28% K rate that's equal to Nola's. Obviously, this is a very tough matchup for the Southpaw, and the chances of the Miami lineup giving run support here or the bullpen behind him not sucking are pretty much slim to none. So as much as it pains me, these are just two pitchers I really want to back. I, I do, but I, I can't at these prices. So instead, I'm going to do something I don't think I've ever done on this show in, in nearly, what, two months that we've been doing it? I'm firing up a no-runs first inning play for you. Yep, 
immediate sweat right out of the gate there in the afternoon, evening hours. Uh, minus 165 is the best number I can find amongst the half dozen or so books I'm signed up for in Arizona. I'm also considering betting the under on three and a half uh, for the team total for the Phillies at decent plus money going for that under three and a half for what it's worth in the first five innings. There's also a three and a half there. So I might be taking it for both teams in that regard, but I'll take my time. I'll see how the rest of the card comes together by 6 p.m. Eastern time. Head to the comment section below here on YouTube. I know I couldn't get to everybody there today. I tried, uh, you know, I was obviously driving, getting back to the home base here, but I uh, wanted to let you guys know over on Twitter, that's the easiest place that you guys can get a hold of me at Eric Lindquist there. But yes, friends, that is what I'm planning on doing here. A like play on the no runs first inning NRFI bet under 0.5 in the first inning of this one. To Yankee Stadium for Twins and Yanks. My team throwing Joe Ryan out there. Yes, my team, the Twins. Uh, going out there to suffer for him against Garrett Cole and the Pinstripes. And I do mean that. As much as I like the story of Ryan emerging, uh, emerging from obscurity and becoming our ace, the velocity is now down in the second half of the season. And despite some strikeout performances that were buoyed by back-to-back 100-pitch -back outings, uh, that is interesting. He's kind of a boom-bust option at this point of the season. He's had three outings of five runs or more in his last seven. And in those other four, he's been lights out with two or fewer runs allowed. But this one's on the road in Yankee Stadium. It's not a place to come in without your best stuff. You know, despite the atrocity that was the Yankees lineup on, on Monday, did you look at that thing? They still won 5-2, but it looked hideous. They still have an absurdly good 110 WRC plus on righties on the season, even if that number has been in a free fall. But you know what's crazy? The Twins, yes, my Minnesota Twins have a better WRC plus against righties on the season than the Yankees do at 112. So as great as Cole is, this is kind of a sneaky, difficult matchup, even without Byron Buxton and Jorge Polanco on the IL. I said it the other day, nine batters with over 400 expected sluggings in this rotation of, of players that are playing day in, day out for Minnesota. And sure, this is Garrett Cole we're talking about. He can mow down any team he wants to, uh, well, just he can mow down anybody when his stuff is on. But anyone else find it odd that the Yankees are only, only minus 205 favorites with him on the mound here? Yeah, that's because anything north of that number would add up to a Twins money line bet for me. And I might consider a contrarian play on the money line if it gets north of where it's at right now. But seeing, as I do like the Yankees to win still, I'm not a crazy person, the prices look fair to me. And the total is appropriate considering the class of the pitchers. There's just nothing for me here to bet at the moment in this game. Doubt that changes. I'm hoping, though, we can get a number north of plus 170 here for the Twins. Uh, if that can get up a little bit higher, that plus 172 that it's sitting at at the best book, you can possibly bet it there. If it gets to plus 180, I think I'll get a small play here. But as it stands right now, that's going to be my lean is the Minnesota money line. I just can't follow through with it without a little bit more behind it. Oh, hey, everybody. It's me again. Just remind you. NFL starts on Thursday. We have the main slate on Sunday. There is going to be so much content here at Odd Shopper. And if you want the best bang for your buck, head to DraftKings and FanDuel right now. You bet $5 at either one of them. You get $200 at DraftKings when you sign up their book. You get $150 when you sign up over at FanDuel's book. That's $350 of free bets for your NFL goods. I'm telling you right now, the best way to build your bankroll before the season starts is taking advantage of these promos. So if you're signed up at DraftKings but not FanDuel, or if you're signed up at FanDuel and not DraftKings, head to the video description box below, click on the link to the book you're not a member at yet, and have an opportunity to get some free bets, some free money, tons of free money. I mean, this is as good of a return as you're ever going to find in a sportsbook promotion. So definitely be signing up for that. And now back to the picks. Oh, would you look at that? The books wised up when it comes to the Blue Jays starter Mitch White this time around as they realized, hey, if the Dodgers didn't want this cat this season, he's probably not very good. Would have probably been more beneficial to Blue Jays fans if they figured that out before trading for him, but such is the life of a Blue Jays fan post Joe Carter. Shout out to the great. But anyways, it's White taking on Kyle Bradish, who I am convinced A, Made a deal with the devil two starts ago as he's now blinked the Astros and the Guardians in back-to-back -back games in convincing fashion. Or B, is benefiting from the Adley Rushman effect like every other starter in this rotation. Seriously, that's the only explanation I've come up with for why these Orioles just continue to be successful here in the starting rotation. He's just so good behind the plate. And now these terrible Orioles starters have flipped the switch. You know, it's like when your buddy 
who was an attractive dude but had no game and no confidence whatsoever back in the day, uh, backs his way into going out with the hottest girl at school. And because she's hot and she knows it, that elevates his game and makes him super confident for the first time in his life and turns him into an unstoppable force for years and years to come. I'd say it's something like that with Bradish, but, you know, without Rushman, he's a rubbish man. Or Bradish is baddish. This segment was a lot, I'm not going to lie. But it's still hard to see the Toronto lineup that went full beast mode on Monday, winning both parts of that doubleheader, and then say, hey, I'll target that. Yeah, Bo Bichette hit 84 home runs or something like that, give or take, on Monday. Vlad, T. Oscar, Springer, Kirk, lots of hitters. Uh, Chapman. So here's my play. Two pitchers I don't believe in. Two lineups I like. And a total of just eight and a half. Give me a slice of the over for a standard like play, please. Over of eight and a half. I like it. Off to Wrigley, where it feels like we haven't been in forever. It's two really, really bad pitchers in Justin Dunn for the Reds and Wade Miley of the Cubs. Starting with Dunn, or should I say Dunn, Dun, Dunn, Dunn, Dunn. Get it? Because he's in a horror film. You know, I think I'm funny, but that's really what matters. But done should be done. <laughs> that's better. At the majors very, very soon. Uh, a 554, a 542 expected slugging, a 383 XWOBA, a 41.2% hard hit rate with only a 19.2% K rate. Check, please. And Wade Miley has pitched all of four times this season due to a shoulder issue that sent him to the 60-day IL. I can't imagine he'll be long for this game in his first start back. And with the Cubs having literally zero to play for besides pride and contracts, whatever. He's not a strikeout guy, and he never has been. A 4.12 uh, expected ERA last season is more indicative of what we can expect from Miley going forward. And with how bad since he is, almost any lefty is interesting enough to get my attention, even in a limited start. But a minus 160 on the money line? Barely plus 130 on the run line? Yep. Easy pass for me in this game. There's some gross games we'll be betting in the future between teams that I, I just don't think will have any incentive to succeed. But folks, this ain't it. Lean the Cubs money line, but please, please don't do it. Cubs money line, though. First off, I have no idea what to believe anymore after Anibal Sanchez and the Nationals just embarrassed the Cardinals in St. Louis on Monday. Is life an illusion? Are we in a simulation and the script is flipped? I have no idea. That was a laughable bet that was never, never in the realm of close. And I apologize and may God have mercy on my soul. And that was with Jack Flaherty having a great first outing. And yet somehow, some way, the Cardinals are even bigger favorites today on Tuesday than they were yesterday. It's kind of weird to me with Jose Quintana, a far worse pitcher than Flaherty on the bump. But oh well. Suppose it's more of an indictment on Paulo Espino, who is bad at everything pitching for the Nationals, a 460 expected slugging, a 269 expected batting average against the Cardinals offense that can't seriously burst, be worse than what we just witnessed on Monday. And yes, Quintana ain't it. But Washington's got a 122 ISO and a 92 WRC plus on the year versus Southpaws, and that ain't it either. So I'm back to the well chasing that money, honey. St. Louis, minus one and a half on the run line. Not a lock. Not a lock because there's literally only one of those on this slate for me. And similar to the White Sox play on Monday that was oh so beautiful, it will be by far my most bet play of the day. But we call that a teaser in the industry, folks. But for now, I'm just talking about a light play on the Cardinals offense, getting revenge, and Q doing just enough to get this one and a half across the finish line. St. Louis, the light play on the run line. All righty, we've got Guardians and Royals here next. It's Shane Bieber versus Chris Bubich. And hard not to like the Biebs here well, with the strikeout stuff that has just ramped up here of late. Eight Ks in five of his past eight starts. An ERA that's down to 3.06 on the season and some serious ability to induce ground balls again. He's still not his Cy Young self, but he is damn close. And I just want to keep investing despite the horrendous, horrendous run um he, he's just had no run support his last two uh he's had two whole runs of run support in his last three starts that's not ideal and some runs should be possible here with chris bubich going on the royal side bright blue across the screen on baseball savant that's never good in the words of jack's mannequin dark blue dark blue a 46.5 percent hard hit rate a 292 expected batting average that's insanely bad and his 17.6 percent k rate doesn't really matter considering the gardens don't k anyways so positive regression is coming for the beebs and as hot or whatever people want to call casey's offense i am absolutely smashing this cleveland run line so much so 
that it's yesterday's White Sox play, which came through for us, uh, a play that I had way more invested in than any other play on the board. And a, a play I know a lot of you guys just hated yesterday because of recent trends, and that's just fine by me. Don't care about them. Lock button, baby. The one and a half, we're laying it with the Guardians, and they are going to scoop us all the monies. You're welcome. Cleveland minus one and a half. Phew. Not only do we get just the one lock button out of the play here, um, we get to just have smooth sailing now. No pressure. No pressure. That one has some pressure on me. That's for damn sure. I'll be living in a box and or in a van down by the river if that doesn't come through. But we're going to talk Texas. We're going to talk Houston. And right off the bat, you should know when I'm talking about Glenn Otto and Framber Valdez, one is better than the other. You should also know when I'm talking about Framber Valdez, the ground ball rate, spoiler alert, it's insane. 67% on the season. It's hard to comprehend just how good that is. As for Otto, not automatic. <laughs> I got nothing for you here. That's not funny. He has no superpower like Valdez. Uh, that makes him look ridiculously bad. It's just 350x Woba, 424 expected slugging. It's ridiculously bad. Oh, and the Astros lineup is really, really good. Oh, and this game's in Houston. Oh, and we're betting the run line on the Astros. Good talk. Glad we had it. Houston minus one and a half. Oh, hello, Coors Field. It's Brandon Woodruff and the Brew Crew taking on Chad Cool uh, and the Rockies. And how sad to not cash the over. Oh, got beat by the hook again. But we're on to a new situation as Woodruff is a massive improvement over Adrian Hauser regardless of the tough road ballpark here. He, like everyone else, just got rocked by the Diamondbacks last time out. Apparently, that's a thing that they're just going to do to everybody now. He surrendered five earned to the D-backs his last start. But throw that out the window for Brandon Woodruff because that team has apparently been blessed by the Lord himself because they are living a charmed ex existence. In fact, that was the first time Woodruff's given up more than three earned runs in a start since May 9th. That's damn good even though he did miss a month from the end of May to the end of June in between. So we've established Woodrow's very good, but everything toward, uh, points towards the opposite when it comes to Chad Cool, A 43.1% hard hit rate, a 349 X Woba to go with a 17.4% K rate. At altitude against this lineup? <laughs> good luck, kid. So we're wising up here. We're avoiding the total this time around, something I should have done on Monday because I like the Brewers big time in that one. I just didn't bet it because silly me. We're going to rectify that mistake. Lots of runs one with the Brewers side specifically. Enjoy this ride on the like train, folks. Minus one and a half, Milwaukee. We've got another beautiful spot to target the Angels here on Tuesday. It's Eduardo Rodriguez versus Mike Myers. And Erod has historically been a pitcher I like, who just seems to get unlucky every single year. I mean, a 363 BABIP last season and a BABIP over 300 the last three seasons is kind of absurd. But... This year, the whip north of 1.4 is certainly something that's getting him into trouble, and 25 walks in just 54 innings sure ain't getting it done. And this Angels team, man, it's almost like Mike Trout matters or something. Just facts, fam, as this team has some decent pieces at the top of the order, and Fletcher, he played awful here on Monday, but uh, you know who gets on base as well? Luis Renifo, who might actually be good, and then that Otani character, he's all right too. Wild stuff, as this team is yet again in the absolute basement of the AL West, but I'm absolutely going to be backing them on the money line. And another reason why, alarm bells, the Tigers face a righty. I think you guys know that bit by now. It's just bad news every single time. We know that by now, but it bears repeating. Against all righties on the season, even bad ones like Myers, the Tigers have a league-worst 71 WRC+. plus. That is the worst in the majors by a mile. So even against Myers, we take the layups as they come, like Button Fam on the money line. Go Halos. Oh, darling, it's one of my adopted sons, Merrill Kelly of the Diamondbacks on the mound facing Joe Musgrove of the Padres. And did any of you guys watch the show Touched by an Angel on CBS growing up? I am an angel sent by God. That British angel chick was so fire back in the day. Anyways, that angel very well, maybe Stone Cold Stone Garrett or Corbin, don't call me Burns Carroll. Because those two dudes are just wrecking the baseball at the moment. And Kelly's always been a pitcher that I want to back uh, from the starting pitcher perspective. He's got a 12-5 and record on the year. A 2.84 ERA, a 1.11 whip, a 2.77 x Woba, a mere 2.20 expected batting average. If in the absence of pure... I mean, he doesn't even have a pure put-away pitch is what I'm getting at. He's a freak of nature who just keeps getting it done anyways. So yeah, we're going to be backing him uh, against Joe Musgrove and company here. 
but we're also going to back Joe Musgrove as he's got no velocity concerns for me anymore. And the 11K game he just put up against the Giants last time out shows the sort of upside that can come in handy so long as his arm's good to go, second half fatigue be damned. So while I expect the Ks to decrease from the 11, especially if the Diamondbacks roll out a lineup similar to what they had today, just no Ks to be found, I think both he and Kelly deserve backing in this spot, making the under of seven a very enticing proposition. So I'm not getting carried away here, but... Also, add this into the account, uh, Brandon Drury on the IL for a concussion, the seven-day IL. So that's yet another positive for runs below expectation here. The under of seven, I'm giving that a pretty modest like. Off to Oakland for what is sure to be a mismatch series to end all mismatch series is. Series is? Something like that. It's Braves and Athletics is what I'm getting at. Kyle Wright versus Cole Irvin. And we got a kind of interesting situation because Kyle Wright, he should be better than what he grades out to be. He's got a 243 expected batting average, though. It's a little bit above league average, so not great. He does have the 24% K percentage, but this top of the Oakland lineup, I don't know. I think it's better than people give it credit for. Credit for. Sean Murphy, Seth Brown, uh, those two specifically are guys that I just kind of have interest in getting to every single day from a props perspective. Cody Thomas joining the party now uh, with his 60, 16 expected slugging. That's just through nine batted ball events, but still somebody to keep it, uh, keep an eye on here as well. And Cole Irvin, he's not good himself, but when you start talking about a, ba- uh, a ballpark that suppresses a lot of this power that's going to exist from the right side from Atlanta, you have Ozuna still with this knee that's dinged up that he's going to play through the rest of the season. I kind of find myself leaning towards the plus one and a half here on the Oakland side. Now, there's a lot of other bets on the board that I do prefer to this one, but I think I'm going to talk myself into this. And the more and more that I look at this play, you're getting plus money in a game with under a seven total. Now, sometimes it's not a perfect science. It's not exactly math to be looking at it directly that way. But when you don't expect a lot of runs to be scored and you're getting plus money on the plus one and a half, some decent enough hitters there and a bad starter on the mound, uh, in Cole Irvin that gets kind of the bump in terms of his home ballpark. I think it's a play we got to get behind. So I'm leaning that way. Hit me up in the comment section below or on Twitter at Eric Lindquist. You know the drill. I'll tell you if it does make the card. Two games to go. We head to the White Sox and Mariners, and it's Johnny Cueto versus Logan Gilbert. And I continually say this, but Johnny Cueto is one of the luckiest dudes in baseball. I don't know how he continually is using deception and weird release points and making everything work for him on the mound Trust me, just go watch him still. He's up there doing tap dancing lessons from time to time. He only has a 15.7% K rate. A 256 expected batting average is really bad, but he's in a ballpark where if he suppresses power, it is really hard to score runs uh, up there in Seattle at T-Mobile Park. Uh, It's just a a good ballpark for Johnny Cueto specifically with his 36.2% hard hit percentage to be pitching in because home runs are really the best way that you can attack that ballpark. Uh, And it's still a below uh, average ballpark in that regards. But for me, I'm looking at Logan Gilbert as kind of a reason that I like the over of this. In addition to Johnny Cueto, he's got a 45.9% hard hit percentage. And yes, I covered it yesterday when I was in love with the White Sox going up against Marco Gonzalez. They are so much better against lefties than righties. But when you start talking about a 45.9% hard hit percentage and a 411 expected slugging, I'm kind of surprised that his results have been as decent as they've been this season. So Yeah, some people may perceive Logan Gilbert to be an ace. I really don't. And that makes the seven grade out a little bit higher for me. So I'm looking at this having 8.2 runs here at the moment. Uh, That's 1.2 runs higher than seven. Look at me doing math on the fly. Telling you, the over of seven grades out very, very nicely for me in this matchup. And the last game of the night here. We know Tyler Anderson's going to be on the mound for the Dodgers because he lines up for that. And they don't really have a whole lot of starters left there. But I have... No clue, absolutely zero, who the Giants are going to put out there, which makes the analysis pretty one-sided here for me, but such is life. Tyler Anderson, this gets said a lot about Dodgers pitchers. I say it all the time, but they make pitchers the best versions of themselves, and Tyler Anderson is really limiting hard contact. A sub-30% hard hit rate, going to face a a murderer's row. I mean, you get this Evan Longoria-J.D. Davis combination in the middle of the lineup. We saw what they just did against Andrew Heaney here on Monday. I think there's an opportunity for them to possibly do it again here against Tyler Anderson. But I still got to like the Dodgers lineup no matter what. I have no idea what the value is going to look like. And I have no idea who's going to be starting here for the Giants. So lots of things that we have to comb through tomorrow in the morning and the afternoon. Lots of times, lots of time until first pitch. So I'm not too worried about it. 
Of course, the Dodgers are going to be favorites against anybody that the Giants put on the mound. It's just a question of how big of favorites. That's why I'm leaning the Dodgers money line. It might turn into a run line. It might turn into a lot of different things based on what the number is that drops. But considering the Giants have no indications of who's going to be starting for them, hard for me to tell you anything other than, hey, Tyler Anderson, that's a pitcher I can back. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Head to that comment section below. Let me know which plays I'm a dunce cap for. Let me know which plays you absolutely need to make. The things that make your cards. Uh, I love talking baseball with all of you every single day. I feel very honored to do as such. But also, I want to help you guys out. And again, I don't get anything really to speak of. It's not even a big deal in terms of DraftKings FanDuel. It doesn't really affect my life if you guys add it to, to the portfolio, but it'll affect you big time because you are getting $203 at DraftKings by bet, just betting $5. If you're watching this video and you've reached this portion, go sign up there. Head to FanDuel as well if you haven't signed up there. $153. That's $350 for $10. There's no gimmicks. There's no strings attached. That is simply facts, fam. So if you haven't signed up at those sports books, make sure you take advantage before the NFL starts on Thursday. Until tomorrow, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLP streets on Tuesday.